Amparo Keravid is a lecturer and researcher at the Faculty of Communication and Language from the Pontificia University da Javeriana. She has extensive experience in communication and democracy, conflict and development and community media is one of the ways she engages with these issues. Um, what do you think is the relevance and the purpose of community media in today's uh, changing media landscape? Well, community media is not as new as we think sometimes. If we talk, for example, in Latin America, community media started in the mid-century, 20th century. And of course it gets stronger and stronger during the century. But also in many places in, in other parts of the world, like uh, Spain, for example, also I know about Nepal, in Asia, in Philippines. And uh, what I think is important of, of media, of community media, are the, um, the fact that it materializes democracy and participation and presence of the people in media and in the spectrum. And this is, you know, part of the democracies today. How do you think community media presents itself in your region, uh, in Latin America today? Well, today it is very strong and mainly because it is part of a very long and strong social communicative movement that started, I think, in the early 60s of 20th century. And uh, it recognizes the, the right of the people to access to communication, not only as audiences, but also as a producers. And if you remember that in, in 80s, past century, we had the Mac writing form that was the first, you know, like global manifestation of this right. Well, it was also born in Latin America as part of our experience. Today, we have policies in all countries that uh, orient and protect community media. But um, you always have to be there because sometimes when you have a lot of regulation, you also have also a lot of cuts. Uh, in fact, that was going to be my, uh, my next question. I wanted to understand what are the challenges really that uh, present themselves before practitioners and policy makers alike, especially in your country? I think the main challenge is to really be participative. Mm. Because perhaps there is uh, people who have the volunteer of make it, you know, the leaders and the people in academics or wherever, that want really to make community media participative. But to really make it is difficult because you, you have to be sure that people is prepared to do it, that can go close to the media, can learn how to produce it, how that they feel comfortable, you know, like using microphones, cameras, and choose topics of interest, you know, building up agendas and making the producing. And this is just a big job to do. So you have, the policy, you have the volunteer, but then you don't have the conditions. You have to work on conditions. Right, and uh, what are the challenges you think uh, um, are key to uh, policy implementation? Uh, what are the challenges that present themselves for policy implementation in your country? You know, policy, policies all around the world are finally made by the state, with or not participation from the people. Even when there is a lot of participation, at the end, our states, governments, give policies. So it's very interesting when you have democratic societies, democratic states, democratic governments that call people to help doing policies. But at last, you have to be sure that these policies are also part of a social movement and that people get in charge of their own destiny on media. Right. Um, in fact, talking about the state, what do you think is the role of the state uh, in today's landscape where uh, corporates uh, uh, play a big role and globalization is such a huge phenomenon? Uh, in the midst of all of this, what do you think is the role of the state in advancing and protecting community media? Well, they have to protect it, to accompany it, to uh, build up condition, to uh, really strengthen community media because community media is democratization. And if you say, you know, a government says we are democratic, then you have to show it up. And in, communi in communications is, you know, creating conditions and 
helping organizations and communities to have their own media and to can produce their own news, their own interests on it, on them. Right, and uh, we, were, uh, we were also suggesting that there is a lot of competition between commercial players and uh, community media. If you could just uh, throw some light on that. Yes, it happens mostly, I, well, I know more Latin America than any other region in the world, but in, com in Latin America you have this because our commercial media are very strong and they have a lot of power and they have a lot of influence in the state and they feel you know like challenge it they they are afraid about community media is something like crazy but it's real so they're all the time competing for spectrum competing for people for producers for professionals uh, competing for agendas and for example in my country something that you can do you cannot do it in any place but in my country colombia you could do it is that a private network radio network for example or tv network could buy a local radio right. so they all the time in search of these weak radio local radio to buy them and take them for their networks and this is one of the green very big threats we have in colombia and in latin america to maintain our independency to be sustainable right. and to really be pertinent and uh, you know near the people and i think governments have to protect and to create conditions for the people to have their own media right and uh, what do you, how imminent is digitization uh, and how do you think it will impact the community media uh, landscape it is of a great impact of course because radio is a technology television is a technology and then these platforms put all everything together and all these is um, dig digital and um, you know it's not only because the technology but because of the people it doesn't matter what sort of people if they are rich people poor people or whatever people they love technology and this digitalization has to be part of the democratization and it also because it creates easy uh, conditions for the people to access to media and to make their own media Sometimes it's not easy, sometimes it's expensive, but what we have seen in the last decade is that digital things, digital things are becoming cheaper and people start to using them more to get used to them. And I think we have to use these opportunities. And I think we, you cannot avoid the subject, you have to face it and to use it in your, for your interests as a community. Right, and uh, finally, what is your take on news uh, as part of community media? Just to give you a background, in India, news is banned on private and uh, community uh, radio. Uh, uh, how important do you think news is for community radio oh my and God. community media? News are central for community media because what are news? News are information. News are visibilization of what is happening in a community. So just community people know what is important and what should be being shown to the people you know if you uh, if only the government or whatever just commercial in other countries have the opportunity of make and prepare agendas and to make news and to show events or whatever well this won't be any community media I mean, no media inter no community interests we need the people also to tell other people in the communities and in the society what are their own news, which are they important, how they, they want to be shown to the, the country. Because there, there comes, a, a, for example, a journalist from Capital to interview you and asking their questions and almost their answers. No? What is that for? This is not community interests. So I think it's very important that you Indian people fight for the right of building up their own uh, news from community media. Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. <laughs>